assalamu alaikum and good morning to one and all today we'll start with a new chapter that is pharmacoeconomics so pharmacoeconomics it is very important branch of the science which is specially related to the pharmacy and economical aspects of the medicine i am professor sheikh abu sufyan welcome you to my youtube channel pharma learning forever at the end of this e learning session you are able to define pharmacoeconomics explain its aim and uses and discuss reason for increase in healthcare spending and increase in a drug cost so let's first start with the definition of pharmacoeconomics so pharmacoeconomics it is the branch of economics that uses the different principle of the cost and the benefit the cost and the effectiveness the cost minimization the cost of the illness and cost utility analysis specially to compare pharmaceutical products and the treatment strategies so what you are doing in pharmacoeconomics so it is a branch of the economics which is specially related to the medicine and the healthcare profession so what they are doing they study the cost and their relative benefit likewise they also study the cost and their effectiveness like person taking the medicine and it also reducing that particular disease but if it produces some side effect at the same time like the drug which produces the vomiting so the drug it reduces the disease but at the same time it produces the vomiting so in that case the drug it reduces the disease but it is not as effective as expected okay so the what is the cost and what is their effectiveness likewise how you can reduce the cost because if you want to give medicine to specially wide range of the people which also including the middle class and lower income class group then in such case you your focus must be to minimize the cost so the cost minimization how it can be possible at the same time with no loss to the pharmaceutical company they are recovering their price that has been spent with minimum with minimum profit and to reduce the cost so that that drug can be affordable to the common man right likewise the cost of complete illness so the cost of medicine it is one thing and the cost of complete illness it is another thing for example in case of the diarrhea and the dysentery the earlier you need to hospitalize the patient because you need to give the iv in order to reduce the dehydration whereas after the research and after the development of the ors that is oral rehydration therapy now anyone at home can also take the treatment of the diarrhea so the same disease that is the diarrhea earlier when to healthcare system and the society okay so it is the description and analysis of the cost of the drug therapy to the healthcare system and the society so uh, it is not just including uh, the some uh, one or two thing but it's something related to huge data and based on that data you are giving certain description you are doing the analysis by applying statistic to that particular data so that you can reach to the conclusion which is related to the cost of the drug therapy to the healthcare system and the society so when you are doing all this thing then then that process or that science it is called as pharmacoeconomics i hope or uh, the definition of pharmacoeconomics it is clear to you since it is neutral lengthy definition so i have break down that definition into different component so that you can easily understood what is the meaning of pharmacoeconomics now let's see what is the role of pharmacoeconomics and health outcome research okay so the role of pharmacoeconomics and health outcome research the first role is is the informing clinical development and market access decision of new innovative medicines now what do you mean by informing clinical development now when you are doing the study of the different aspects of the pharmacoeconomics like the cost and the benefit the cost and their overall effectiveness the cost and the overall management of the illness so when you are doing all this study then based on this study you can form this to the physician or to the clinical practitioner okay so this process is it is called as the informing clinical development so you can inform this to the physician and you this will also help you in case of market access decision of new innovative medicine 
so in case of the old and established medicine you are aware of the cost of the drug you are also aware of what their effectiveness and how it can help you to manage the disease so you are already aware because the drug which is something the established and the old drug but especially in case of the new and innovative medicine when it's come into the market the most of the time people are not aware about that medicine they are not aware about why their cost it is high it is the, it is the relationship between the cost and benefit it is not being established and also sometimes some new medicines are little expensive but those medicines are the need of the hours those medicines are the life saving medicine for example in in case of the covid 19 the most demanding medicine it is the remdesivir okay and if you see the cost the cost it is little high so what government it is doing they are based on the need of the hour since um, it is a life saving drug so now government they are using uh, the csr fraud fund that is the corporate social responsibility fund to subsidize the rate of that medicine so that it can be available even to the common man okay so how this market access decision it is possible to subsidize that drug it is this is based on the pharmaco economic study what is the cost of the drug because obviously when pharmaceutical company they spend amount and their time in the development of that medicine so pharmaceutical company will not sell that drug for the loss they are expecting the benefit now what government can do based on um, the demand of that medicine based on saving the life of many people so this is called as market access decision so this decision is happen because you have the data related to pharmaco economics you have the data related to the demand of the drug and you know how that drug it is important to save the life of the people so the main role of pharmaco economic it is informing this clinical development and market access decision of new innovative medicine secondly it is also, the second role it is also to work on health economics which particularly focuses on the cost and the benefit of the drug now what do you mean by the cost and the benefit health economics so do remember that when you are the price regulatory authority of the india or the price regulatory authority of any country when they give approval of certain price for selling that drug then that approval it is based on certain analysis and the certain data that has been submitted that by that pharmaceutical company so it including the amount has been spent in the process of the invention in the manufacturing in the synthesis of the drug the marketing of that drug so everything it is considered but most important parameter that is considered it is the benefit of the drug their therapy so when you are charging a high price of the drug or when you sell the drug at high price it should provide equivalent benefit to the patient isn't it so the price whatever it is is been assigned to the drug it must be justified in terms of the benefit which is offered by that particular medicine isn't it now if the same drug which is available which is um, available at lower price and it provide the same benefit if that is the case so you are doing comparative study now the comparative study it has been done between two drug drug a and drug b the drug a having the high price and the low benefit drug b having comparatively less price as compared to a and provide the same benefit as drug a if that is the case then drug b uh, it is more preferred drug okay so this 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 conclusion you can come only after doing pharmaco economic study or this is also called as the health economics so this is the second important role of pharmaco economics the third role it is it focused on economic evaluation of pharmaceutical products which include two important thing the first important thing it is the health outcome research okay so it is also called as hor health outcome research what is the outcome of giving that medicine what is the outcome of giving particular pharmacotherapy to the patient because obviously you are not giving medicine just to earn the benefit so pharmaceutical company will not give medicine just to earn the benefit but most important thing it is the outcome of that medicine that what benefit patient is getting so when you are doing that study it is called as health outcome research it is also called as hor and it is also, and another study it is called as patient reported outcome 
So one thing it is the theoretical study. What is theoretical study? You have given the drug, right? And the drug has produced, it has relieved you from the fever, okay? Based on their mechanism of action and based on what is observed by the physician. Now, when you are giving the medicine and you are taking feedback from the patient, right? So you have started taking the feedback of the patient related to the outcome of the pharmacotherapy, then such feedback it is called as patient reported outcome, okay? So when you are doing this study as a part of economic evaluation of that particular medicine, then such cases it is called as health outcome research it or HOR and patient reported outcome. I hope it is clear to you. Now let's see what is the aim of health outcome research that is HOR and patient reported outcome. So the aim of health outcome research and patient reported outcome, it is the understanding the patient value in term of impact of the disease and its treatment on physical functioning and psychosocial well-being. Now try to understand. These are the little bit, the scientific term, little difficult to understand, but I will explain you and make it easy so that you can easily understand what is the meaning of this, okay? So on the basis of the HOR, that is health outcome research and patient reported outcome, what basically you are doing is you are trying to understand the patient value. That is how drug or how much value that drug or pharmacotherapy providing to the patient, especially in term of impact of disease. What do you mean by impact of disease? How much that drug has reduces the disease? How much that drug has relieved the symptom of the disease? So that is called as the impact of the disease. Secondly, and its treatment on physical functioning. For example, patient was suffering from Parkinsonism and after giving the levodopa, his resistance to the passive movement is reduced. Now he can able to do his physical functioning. Earlier he will not able to move, right? Uh, he need the help from someone else. Uh, earlier he won't, was not able to wear uh, his cloth. But now after taking the levodopa, since it has improved uh, the rigidity, it has reduces the rigidity and it has in, improved the motor functioning of that patient, he can do his, um, uh, his job on his own, isn't it? So this is called as uh, the benefit of that drug on the physical functioning. Likewise, second important thing, it is the psychosocial well-being. What do you mean by psychosocial well-being? So drug should not only provide the physical benefit, but it should provide the holistic result so that it can improve the psychosocial well-being. Now, suppose earlier patients suffer from uh, the uh, resistance to the passive movement, that is the rigidity, and he was suffering from the tremor uh, as a result of the symptom of the Parkinsonism. But when he has started taking the levodopa, his physical functioning is improved. It has not much less, uh, it has not much side effect so that there is no more psychosocial well-being. Now, if the drug started showing the side effect in some patient, we have seen in some patient they suffer from tardive dyskinesia. Some patient, there are some other side effects are related to the levodopa were there. If that is the case, if these side effects are not tolerable to patient, so although physical functioning is being improved, but since the patient suffering from the, psych uh, the side effect, their psychosocial well-being will be reduced, okay? So your drug should be such that it provides the improvement in the disease, it also provides or improve the physical functioning in the patient and also provide psychosocial well-being. So if that is the case, then in this case, it is known as health-related quality of life, right? That is called as the HRQL. So that is health-related quality of the life. So you can say that the levodopa has improved the health-related quality of life. Now, if the physical functionings are not improved as expected, and if, if it provides to produce more psychosocial well-being, so although it has reduces the disease, so impact on the disease, it is good, but it has the less health-related quality of life. So when you measure the overall treatment, the overall price and their benefit in terms of health-related quality of the life, it is, um, it is called as HRQL. So that is the important the aim and objective of the health outcome research and patient reported outcome 
that is called as the PRO. I hope it is clear to you. Now let's see what are the uses of pharmacoeconomics. So we have seen the aim of uh, the PRO or HOR. Now let's see what is the use of pharmacoeconomics. So now well, you have you did pharmacoeconomical study and you get you have received certain set of data and certain information to you. Now how you can use this pharmacoeconomic study? So the first use it is to make a formulary decision. Now if you know that the price of drug is high and benefit it is given by that drug it is less right and other drug it is available at the lower price with equivalent benefit that is offered by the earlier drug if that is the case the physician can take formulary decision and instead of prescribing earlier drug he will prescribe second drug which having the less price and more benefit as compared to earlier drug right so based on this eco pharmacoeconomic study it will help physician it will help regulatory authority to make formulary decision so this is the first use of pharmacoeconomics second use it is to design disease management program so now if you look at the management of covid 19 so it is basically decide it is designed based on pharmacoeconomic study now if you look at the earlier case in case of march and april when patient was admitted into the private hospital the bill solved was coming in the lakhs of rupees right so, uh, so some of the patients they have even paid 5 lakhs to 10, 10 lakhs rupees of the bill just for getting the treatment of covid 19 but now after doing the study of pharmacoeconomics getting the data now government can ha have developed the disease management program and under this disease management program they have put the cap on the rate of the different services provided by the hospital so the patient if he is on a ventilator they have decided that uh, no matter how much five star facility is provided by the hospital but you should not take the charge amount beyond that certain limit okay likewise the second important uh, the disease management program developed it is the vaccination process so there was the cap it is put on the vaccination process if you are taking vaccine on the government hospital it will be available at free of cost whereas in good private hospital if you are taking vaccine then you have to pay for one dose you need to pay 150 rupees as the charge of the medicine and 100 rupees just as a service charge to take that injection okay so the 250 rupees cap has been put on that based on uh, uh, the pharmacoeconomic study okay and the need of the hours so to design disease management program the pharmacoeconomic studies are utmost important third important role it is to measure the cost effectiveness of the intervention does the cost justify the benefit does that cost it justify the effectiveness of the um, that particular medicine okay so based on the pharmacoeconomic study based on the pro that is patient related outcome based on the health outcome research so you can take the measure which is related to the cost effectiveness of the intervention so these are the three important uses of the pharmacoeconomics so i have done with my first part of session let's have the short question and answer part so my first question is give the definition of pharmacoeconomics yes so uh, definition of the pharmacoeconomics so although i have uh, given the definition uh, in little def uh, uh, detail but you can just write that in short as well yes so let's see who give the first answer Okay, so I can see the Nurun Nisa has given the first answer. She has mentioned that it is the branch of economic that uses the cost benefit to compare a pharmaceutical product and the treatment strategies. Yes, you are right. So, um, although definition is correct, but there are different components that you have to mention here. So, the first, I think uh, other students have started writing that answer. I can see some of you you have mentioned about the cost benefit cost of the illness or then some of you have mentioned about the cost of effectiveness yes so it is basically the branch of economic that uses the cost benefit cost effectiveness cost of the illness and cost benefit analysis okay to compare different pharmaceutical product and come to the conclusion so when you are doing this type of study 
it is called as pharmacoeconomic study so this is all the description of the economic part the pricing part of the drug their benefit their um, uh, the impact on complete management of the illness so when you are doing that this type of study it is called as pharmacoeconomics right uh, let's move on to next question what is hrql that is health related quality outcome hrql yes so let's see who gives first answer so just now we have seen the, the the hrql it is basically uh one of the aim of pharmacoeconomics i am expecting answer from everyone i can see only selected student and few of you are giving the answer yes so hrql so nurul nisa has given the first answer she has mentioned that the impact of disease and its treatment on physical functioning functioning and psychological well being okay so yes you are right so it is basically the aim one of the aim of or uh, the health related outcome that is hro and it is also one of the outcome of the patient related outcome that is pro where you are trying to understand how or uh, your drug or how your price it is going to produce the impact on the disease on on the physical quality of the life and psychosocial well being of the patient okay so that when you are studying such type of study it is called as hrql that is health related quality of life okay so health related quality or quality of life so that is the long form of hrql and we have just now seen that what it is okay let's move on to third question enlist the uses of pharmacoeconomics enlist the uses of pharmacoeconomics so we have seen there are three important uses of pharmacoeconomics let's see who give the first answer so i am expecting the all three or uh, uses of pharmacoeconomics uh, that you give the answer of that okay yes so first answer again given by nurun nisa it is to make formulary decision altav has mentioned to design disease management program just so this is the second use to design disease management program third kavita has mentioned to measure the cost effectiveness of intervention yes so these are the three important uh, uses of pharmacoeconomics so something which is related to formulary decision then or uh, disease management program and uh, third one it is related to the cost and the benefit or the cost and effectiveness analysis so that is done by using pharmacoeconomic study okay so it seems you all are active and you are giving the answer so i hope you have understood my first part of the session now let's move on to the second part of the session that is the reason for increase in healthcare spending now why people have started spending more on the healthcare earlier the people of the developing country like india they were not much sensitive to their health but nowadays all uh, the people are more sensitive towards their health and they have started more spending towards health right so let's see what is the reason for increase in healthcare spending so the first reason for increase in healthcare spending it is increase in demand in healthcare quality and the services now this is something which is related to different parameters so what i'm going going i'm doing i'm going reverse and we'll try to understand how it is related to the second parameter right so first thing that you must remember that why there is increase in healthcare spending because obviously the demand it is more so since there is increase in demand in healthcare healthcare quality and services so now people have started spending more on the health so now you can see the five star hospitals they have uh, coming um, coming and they have started giving their services so some of you to mention about the five uh, five star hospital like the apollo or uh, it started giving good services and if you see their building and type of services they are giving they are highly sophisticated okay since all these parameters are there there are demand the people are taking those services so uh, the overall spending on healthcare it is increased now this increase in demand in healthcare quality and the services it is something related to increase in standard of the living right so there is increase in the standard of living and now why there is increase in the standard of living 
because there is also increase in life expectancy so the patient life expectancy it is increased and since there is increase in patient life expectancy expectancy there is also increase in a standard of the living okay so these are everything these are related now uh, in, in, there is increase in standard of living so there is increase in life expectancy and now since there is increase in life expectancy so the many company they have started developing new technology which is related to healthcare so there is also increase in technology now we are just not using the technology but in addition to this technology we are moving towards the improvement in the sophistication of the healthcare technology so earlier we were just using the technology but now we are moving towards sophistication the automation where the human intervention it is less we are using the ar we have started using the ml that is the machine learning so we are moving towards the sophistication of the health technology so this is these are all reason for which there is increase in healthcare spending so suppose if there is no demand for healthcare if people's the standard of life if it is not increased and if there is no increase in life expectancy obviously there is decrease in demand for healthcare spending and there could not be much spending on the healthcare but since now there is increase in standard of living of the people they have increases life expectancy as a result of that there is increase in demand in healthcare quality and the services which lead to increase in healthcare spending second aspect is related to the technology so earlier there were only technology but now we are moving towards the sophistication of healthcare technology so for developing this technology for purchasing those things you need to hospital has to spend more on the sophistication and when hospital spend that more on the technology obviously they will uh, recover this amount from the patient so as a result of that there is increase in healthcare spending not in only at the patient side due to these three important parameter but also from uh, the hospital side and uh, those uh, the corporate they are coming into the hospital so there is also increase uh, in the healthcare spending due to increase in technology and improvement in the sophistication of the healthcare technology okay so these are the reason for increase in healthcare spending now let's see what are the reason for increase in the cost of the drug so healthcare spending it is different and the cost of the drug it is different maybe you are spending for the treatment of the covid 19 2 lakh rupees in the hospital where you are getting the same medicine as you may, might have received in case of the government hospital but what is the difference the type of services that you have getting in the hospital it is different and in the private hospital it is different or five star hospital is different and type of services you are getting in the government hospital it is different okay so this is the difference between the overall healthcare spending and the spending on the drug now let's see why there is uh, increase in the cost of the drug so the cost of the drug it is increased because the first reason is the new medicines are under patent law so you know that when the new medicine it has been marketed by the inventor so for at least 20 years that medicine is under patent law and when it's fall under the patent law at that time there is the privilege it is given to the investigator to the sponsor and to the pharmaceutical company based on their investment they can charge the amount till that 20 years after expiration of the patent now patent drug become a generic drug so obviously when it become a generic obviously the price of drug will reduced okay so this is the one of the reason the new medicine are under patent law and due to patent law the new medicine are little expensive as compared to the older and those medicine which are generic in nature okay so this is the first reason of increase in the cost of the drug second reason it is the preference of the drug therapy over invasive therapy because obviously if or uh, the drug can give a treatment to you as compared to the surgery or the micro or the medium scale surgery then obviously you will prefer the drug no one will prefer the surgery or invasive therapy right so since there is a more preference of the drug therapy as compared to invasive therapy the price of drug is increased due to increase in their demand so this is the second reason for increase in a uh, cost of the drug third reason it is the discovering various off label use of existing drugs now uh, if you see uh, in case of covid 19 most of the drugs are not new drug these are the repurposed drug what do you mean by repurposed drug like ivermectin it is not uh, used as antiviral drug 
but uh, now um, it was used something for another disease but now today they have started using it as a one of the drug for the treatment of uh, um, uh, a covid 19 likewise doxycycline was the antibiotics it was um, it was used for as an antibacterial drug but now they have started using it for covid 19 as well ramstevir is the antiviral drug likewise the prednisolone the prednisolone it is a steroid but they have started using in case of the COVID-19, right? So these are the discovering of uh, discovering various off-label use of existing drug. So if you are doing this, you are doing some kind of study during the process of the discovery. Maybe small-scale clinical trial, maybe the some randomized clinical trial, or maybe you are doing um, another type of the case report study. So if you are doing this study, you are investing that. So many investigator, many physician and many people involved in that process they will charge some amount since there is you are going towards discovering various off-label use of the existing drug it will add into the price of that particular medicine okay so that is the third reason for increase in the cost of the drug fourth reason could be the irrational drug prescription now if there are many physicians just for the sake of getting commission from the pharmaceutical company they give irrational pre prescription Suppose if you are suffering from simple disease, when you take the prescription, they will be prescribed instead of prescribing the antibiotics, which is available at cheaper rate, they may prescribe you antibiotic, which could be available maybe at 500 or 600 at a at later higher price so that they will get more benefit, right? So uh, the, there are some unethical physician, when you go to them, they write you four to five medicine just for a small illness. Right, so that is called that is called as as irrational drug prescription. So nowadays this practice is also increased in case of some of the physician, and due to that it has also increases the cost of the drug. The last reason could be the spending of pharmaceutical companies on the marketing and launch of the drug. So now when new drugs come into the market, obviously no one will prescribe that medicine unless pharmaceutical company they are doing the marketing through the medical representative for launching of that drug so when the amount has been spent in the marketing in case of uh, and there is complete system it is involved in that including the digital marketing the face-to-face -face marketing by the medical representative and many things since the spending is more on uh, the marketing and launch of the drug this spending will also be recovered from that uh, price of price uh, and as a result of that there is increase in cost of the drug so these are five important reasons for increase in cost of the drug. Now let's see what is you know, why there is increase in price of the drug in the India. So recently if you see uh, the price of many drug has been increased. Let's see what is the reason. So if you see the uh, do some uh, the study in the history then you will come to know that uh, in case of 1979 so it was uh, it was seen that about 85 percent of the drug market was under price control in 1979 what it means about 85 percent of the drug their price has been controlled by the government and it's come under price regulation of india right and there was the cap there was some subsidy given by the government and as a result of that the drug was available even to the reach of the common man okay so i have we have also seen when we were uh, at, uh, during our childhood when we were suffering from the fever we uh, the doctor were giving the medicine very simple generic medicine they used to prescribe to us and they used to charge 20 to 25 rupees and somewhere around 10 rupees also so some physician they were charging 10 rupees as well but now if you go to the physician no matter how simple this is you are suffering from even for cough and cold they will not um, charge you or uh, less than 100 rupees so they will charge you 100 rupees and also they will give you prescribe the medicine where you need to spend at least the 500 to 1000 rupees to purchase those medicine earlier that was not the case it is 20 to 30 times the cost was less because uh, price regulating authority of the india uh, they were controlling the cost of around 85 percent of the drug in the market now if you look at the recent scenario then when the, the, there are successive policies come now there was the privatization and it was observed that this number it is diminished and now 
merely only 20 to 15 to 20 percent of the drug market it is under price control act rest of the drug it's not coming under the price control so since there is no it's not coming under price control there is no use of csr fund there is no subsidy given by the government and since we are moving towards the privatization and this is too much in last 10 years so it is happening the government is doing more towards prioritization and as a result of that there is no control over the price of the drug right so now only 15 to 20 percent of drug are marketed are under price control act since that is the case therefore the drug price are quickly spinning out of the reach of the common man earlier even the drugs are at the reach of the common man but now the price of the drug is spinning out of the reach of the common man and as a result of that uh, all over the world patients are affected so this is not the case of the india but it is happening in the entire world and all over the world patients are affected by high price of the medicine and especially in developing country like india 85 percent of total health expenditure it is financed by a household out of pocket expenditure what it means it is difficult for them to spend on the medicine to spend on the health care so they are spending it out of their saving or out of the saving that they have earned from their hard work so their hard saving the hard earned money now they are spending on the health and they started spending on uh, the drug okay so but poor the condition it is still worse in india because many poor people face a choice between buying medicine or buying the food so obviously when the people are poor they doesn't afford afford the food then how can they afford the medicine so sometimes there is ambiguity to buy either buy the food or the buy the medicine and uh, as a result of that many peoples are not taking the medicine so they, it is happened due to the limited resources and due to the high pricing of the drug okay so this is the entire impact of the the high pricing of the drug that is happen happening in case of the patient okay so pharmacoeconomics um, if you are start applying the principle of pharmacoeconomics then you based on the need of the hours based on the need of that particular area so if you look at the delhi the um, the, the, the delhi governments they have started the mohalla clinic okay so what is the concept the concept it is to provide medicine to even um, those who are poor right so they have started using the csr fund corporate social responsibility fund that is the compulsory fund that industry has to spend to save certain tax so that amount can be spent to do such social work okay so the pharmacoeconomics it's adopt and apply the principle and methodology of health economics to the field of pharmaceutical policy so now if you know the particular area like dharavi they having many poor people they cannot afford the branded medicine then it is the role of the government to establish the clinic where the generic medicine can be given to those patients but the health of, of those patients can be ensured so such type of pharmaceutical policy can be developed by the government uh, based on pharmacoeconomical study that is done or based on the principle and methodology of the health economics to the field of pharmaceutical policy okay so pharmacoeconomic evaluation make use of broad range of the techniques used in health economic evaluation now we'll see this broad range of techniques most probably next lecture so till the time i will take the pause i have done with my today's session i hope you understood whatever i have taught in my today's session so i have referred these two important the review articles the one it is the brinsman are uh, use of pharmacoeconomics in prescribing research so the definition of pharmacoeconomics is taken from this, uh, this article and the second article i have referred it is sumit kumar arvish baldi pharmacoeconomics principle methods and economic evaluation of the drug therapy so i must thanks to both of these author for compiling this information for the benefit of us and uh, for the benefit of the student okay so thank you very much for watching my session for more such learning subscribe to my channels and if you like my today's session then do remember to give me a thumbs up